Inti Raimi. Yeah. It is a traditional religious ceremony of the Incan Empire in honor mm. of the god Inti, or Quichua, which is Quichua for sun. So it's the, mm -hmm. the sun god. Sun god. The Incan, Incan sun god, Inti. I left the U.S. in 2013 thinking the dollar's in trouble. It goes back to Bretton Woods and it goes back to sort of the dollar becoming both the reserve currency of the world and becoming the, the, the currency that is in, has constant demand because you need it to trade. The United States, our, our biggest export is the USD. It's exporting the US dollar everywhere. And we do that in lots of ways, including you know, primarily one of the major ways is through foreign aid. The dollar has been printed into oblivion. Um, you could argue since the 70s, but really since 2008. There's a theory that part of why Ukraine is so important is because it's important for for Russia. They in, ended the informal agreement of the petrodollar. It's more the frog in slowly boiling it's water. The slow, type of thing, it's yeah. the trend is slowly trickling, or our perception of the trend. Saudi Arabia produced approximately 10.6 million barrels of oil per day, which accounted for approximately 10% of the world's production. The vast majority of people don't understand or appreciate what the artificial, what a, what a strong currency does for your quality of life, cost of living. The U.S. produced 12.7 million barrels per, per day. Oh my God. Yeah. All this stuff's going to happen yeah. and I don't want to be in New York for any of this. Yeah. And I'm out of here. Since replacing the sterling in the 20s, the dollar has dominated international trade with key commodities like oil, gold, agricultural products, and, and oil, obviously. Um, this has created a massive worldwide demand for dollars and U.S. Treasuries. The mainstream narrative is going to be always that everything's fine. When there's less demand that way, actively that way, then eventually those dollars come back. So when they export the inflation, the inflation doesn't hit the U.S. market as much. But when those dollars come back, that's when the inflation really hits. If you're looking to heal, if you're looking to slow down, if you're looking to be close to nature, if you're looking to be in a community that's more heart-centered, you know, more human, um, this place is ideal for all of that. Because we export the dollars as well, we export that portion of the inflation. Before September 11th, yeah. September 11th, they lost a trillion dollars. Saudi Arabia is now not trading in the petrodollar. There's some really... So they're gonna buy oil outside of dollars. That's all you have to do is be in balance and be in your heart all the time, and then you, everything in your life works and makes sense. That's not a conspiracy theory anymore. We, 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 there's evidence for this now. Nothing he promised, not one thing that he promised he actually did. The US dollar status is ex his, his, blah, 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 his, historically empowered. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Inflation isn't a necessary evil. A lot of the places in the world that we consider to be poor, what does that mean? Like, it doesn't mean that they're resource poor. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even necessarily mean they're poorly run, although that can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 in, many, in many ways, it just means that the, the way that those countries fit into the global economic plan <laughs> is to keep their currencies devalued. We've allowed ourselves to be so consumed by a system and so plugged in and, and, and programmed in a way that, you know, there's so much stress. Hello, and welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Brandon, I've been made fun of for 30 minutes straight here by you. Have I? I'm a little upset about that. Have I? Ha As you come can... on. Let's no, be honest. It's not true. I'm lying. It's really not true. It really isn't true. Yeah. I mean, we've made fun you of You just don't other. like my voice is the I main. I mean, it's, I do like your voice. I just talk too much. I do, sometimes it's exhausting. Yeah. You're just like, blah, blah. Yeah. Brandon, Brandon, <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> so, so I decided to, well, in honor of solstice, solstice, which is, what is it, Inti, Inti Rami, Inti Rami, mm -hmm. something like that. I don't know how to pronounce which it. Which is, I think just probably means solstice, um, and it must be in, like, Quechua maybe, or, I don't know exactly, so if anyone wants to look that up, Inti, Inti Rami. Inti, Inti Raimi. 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 Inti Raimi. Um, probably just Solstice. Anyways, I think that Inti Raimi was yesterday. Fue ayer, no? But today is Solstice, so then it can't mean that. So I don't Let's know what that really means. 
But anyways, in honor of of Solstice and Inti Raimi, I'm wearing this shirt that actually, I mean, now that I live in Ecuador, I don't have any clothes. It uh, it's a good. It's like maybe the best shirt I have. <laughs> um, that my wife bought me for a all white photo shoot that we did of the family some years back. Oh, interesting. Yep. So is that like one of Diddy's parties? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I think like if you get invited to an all white party, it's it's automatically a, a African American like a black person that invited you. Like I've been invited to a okay. couple of and it's like a it's like you, you have you have to be black. I think. Did did he keep his hands off? <laughs> Is it a hands on? I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hey, I just looked up Inti yeah. Raimi. Yeah, it is a traditional religious ceremony of the Incan Empire in honor mm. of the god Inti, or Quichua, which is Quichua for sun. So it's the mm-hmm. the sun god. Sun god. The Incan Incan sun god Inti. Cool. There we go. Straight from Wikipedia. And it's still alive and well, this tradition here. They had, so, but it, and it falls a day before the solstice, so it'd be interesting to understand, I guess because this, you know, eh, it'd be interesting to understand a little more, but um, they had a whole, like, thing yesterday for it, which I think my kids were at for a brief time because the Echo Club went there for right? about an hour Are you and serious? Uh, my daughter's calling me, she's coming back from the States and she's trying to buy me clothes. I should actually answer this. Should we just do this live? Let's do it. Okay. I mean, it's not live. <laughs> or not live. Should we do this pre-recorded live? Sure. Hi, princess. Um, OJ, hey. what's up? Hey, <laughs> No one's there. I'm going to be able to hear it. Yes. How did she know that? How did you know that? I have my ways. Wow. Mm. Very mysterious. All right, what's up? All uh, right, Dad, I just want to ask you. Yes. Um, are the boys good, too? No, they could use stuff. Shorts, mostly. Shorts, boxers, okay. socks. Boys, shorts, boxers, socks. Yep. Okay, and where do you normally shop? Is it Calvin Klein? I don't remember. No, I don't like any... All I want is, like, clean. I don't want any brands. I don't want any of that anymore. I just want... 100% cotton, no brands, nothing. I, You know, it's, like, hard to find what I want, but I try, yeah. Okay, so do you have any tips on where I could find that? Like, what store? No, what type of store? I have no idea. Just whatever you can find is fine. If it has a little, like, CK or whatever, like, I'll live with it. But just 100% cotton and the slim fit on the short shirts, please. <laughs> Extra small. <laughs> Extra okay. small slim fit. You just made me, just made me <laughs> snort, bro. I just kicked. I just snorted. Wow, you get that from Raina. I know. I All right, okay. I gotta go. I love you. All right, all right. See Socks, you tomorrow. Boxers, Socks. I mean, soft boxers and what for the boys? Socks, boxers, oh and shorts. You've got the attention span of your father. <laughs> yeah. All right, sounds good. All right, love you. Bye. See you tomorrow. Love you too, bye. All right, so we took care of that. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's calling you? <laughs> Your wife? Yeah. You gonna answer? Or no. Sure. Hey. Hi. Hey, we're live on the pod right now. Oh, you shouldn't have told her that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, what's up? I was just calling you back because we were down talking to Francisco. Okay. Well, what Ladies. time? What what time will we be back from Quinn soccer games tomorrow? Approximately. Probably two. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Right. You're not gonna tell your wife you love her, bro. I love you. Bye for now. There you go. <laughs> I didn't hear her say anything. <laughs> she said it first. You just. Did she? You just... I was talking. Hey, yeah, I'm going to tell you what I feel. I'm her bro. So it's do just, you, like you got to keep talking. Do you like the trim? You just got to keep talking. <laughs> my God. Can you just let me have a conversation with my wife where we can say g- goodbye, how we say goodbye, without you having to be the freaking... So you're saying I, I preempted your... You you did, were... She said it first, mm. and then I said... Yeah. What, you, what you said? Wh- whatever I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways... 
Uh, let's get let's get to the topic of the day here. What are we at talking least about? A little today? bit, but I don't know if I finished. Did I finish the solstice thing? All oh, right. So they have this whole thing going on yeah. in Vilcabamba where right. they're celebrating yesterday. Um, yeah, a great story. That's about it. So, <laughs> so, so, um, right. But no, uh, we're we're doing a second pod this week mostly because there's some really interesting economic news. Um, that has come out and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hand the floor to you cause you're really the person to talk about this well, but, um, I will, I will set the stage and preface a little bit. So, you know, I left Ecuador in uh, Ecuador. I left the U S in 2013 thinking the dollars in trouble. Mm-hmm. I didn't know when, but I was concerned then about that. Um, you know, I had done like one of the you know, a lot of us down here, right, have alternative views, not CNN, not Fox News views on the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I had I had sort of done really deep, deep dives on all kinds of things, including the money system and, you know, debt-based currency and how that works and, you know, the whole nine. I, w- I won't get into all that, but um, which had, you know, was one of the many things that really shifted my thinking in terms of how I want to set up my life. And how the world works and, you know, what is scarcity and what is abundance and, you know, how all that works. And just like it has such incredible ramifications, um, the money system and sort of the the overall economic system that uh, that essentially gives you a tiny fraction of the value of your labor for you to then live your life on, for you to then, you know, have as as money, as what we call money. Uh, so anyway, so I was, you know, I was down here, like, whew, I got out, <laughs> just <laughs> made it. You know, I sold my <laughs> sold my buildings before they collapsed, and right. that was my thinking then. It's not necessarily my thinking now, obviously, right. but um, right. So so, and part of that story, obviously, right, is you know, if you if you've studied any of this stuff, right, it goes back to Bretton Woods, and it goes back to sort of the dollar becoming both the reserve currency of the world. And becoming the, the the currency that is in has constant demand because you need it to trade, right? So you, it's the I forget the, the, the well the petrodollar is that in that, the 70s. but yeah, yeah, but it but it be but it but even before that, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think even starting with Bretton Woods, it became the currency that if if you know if I'm buying something from you. I'm getting dollars first, or is that only oil? Yeah. Are you saying no? There's some. It depends. Like there was different. There was different agreements, right? Like sure. Even even the petrodollar with that was an informal agreement. It wasn't like an official treaty right. or something. That, as far as I'm aware, yeah. I mean, it's been enforced through the military forever. Well, it's been enforced through, yes, through foreign aid and military support on our behalf. Yeah. Right. So support. So I just want to sort of so 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 like the kind of you know the very brief without getting too deep obviously on this the very brief sort of summary of why this is interesting mm-hmm. is because the dollar has been printed into oblivion. Um, you could argue since the seventies, but really since two thousand eight, um, and then again, and you know you, you, there's always like new new levels of that. The dollar's been printed into oblivion, but the dollar has this incredible staying power. Because there's sort of what I, I like to say, there's this sort of like inelastic demand mm-hmm. built in for the dollar um, because of because it's a reserve currency and because of the petrodollar. Um, and so that's allowed, you know, uh, many orders of magnitude more printing to, to go on. It's one of the things. We also, there's other factors, but that's one of the factors that's allowed many orders of magnitude more printing to go on. Then would be allow would would work under normal circumstances of another country that didn't have uh, didn't have those sort of protocols or whatever in place for their currency. So, you know, lots of people have theorized for a long time that if if the petrodollar trade ever goes away, like if that ever goes away, the dollar will quickly be in trouble. I'm not saying that's true or not true, but that's why you know that to me that's why this is really an interesting story. Um, and then obviously there's all kinds of ramifications. So yeah, really the, you know, having having the reserve currency and the petrodollar, that's really allowed the government to deficit spend. You know, that's right. That's where we really, you know, we've gotten we've gotten we've monetized that we've deficit spend into oblivion. But then you know we do create, you know, if we think about import export. 
the United States, our, our biggest export is the USD. It's exporting the U.S. dollar everywhere. And we do that in lots of ways, including, you know, primarily one of the major ways is through foreign aid. Right. right? So we, we, we give foreign aid packages and we give, we promise military support, you know, military support, which is military presence in that country, along with foreign aid. And then that creates demand, inelastic, I mean, I mean it's not actually it's not inelastic. But, it's like yeah. more maybe inorganic. Yeah, it's it's certainly artificial. Artificial demand. demand or, yeah. Because then what, and, and it's twofold, because often, particularly, like, for example, with the petrodollar with Saudi Arabia, it wasn't just the agreement to trade oil in dollars, but it was also for them to invest dollars into U.S. treasuries. Into the US. Well, not only U.S. treasuries, but into the U.S. in right. general. But, yeah, yeah. but U.S. treasuries is a big part of it, right? Yeah. That's how the game, that's how the cycle keeps, the you know, they keep, you know, moving the, you know, juggling the balls with the treasury system and the, uh, the debt I'm not even going to make a dirty joke. Yes, good. Um, but, but that's that, so, so you're... And then when they spend those dollars, they're spending those dollars on imports, right? Mm-hmm. So they're, again, so it's, 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 it's actually genius. It's a genius system. Yeah, it is. The whole money system is a genius. It's, it's phenomenal. It, it's unbelievably genius because then it can be, you know, and that's why we get in, you know, I don't know. This is my opinion. This is why we get into a lot of these wars yeah. in these places, in these conflicts is because, we funnel them full of aid, and that creates this demand for dollars that doesn't exist. And then for that, you get a little military support. You're going to invest those dollars back in U.S. Treasuries, and you're going to, you know, buy imports. Yeah, and there's also a lot of wars just, just simply to enforce the petrodollar. Right, right. I mean, and that's, you know, you can go research stories about, you know, some of the past conflicts and with yeah. Iraq and Saddam Hussein. You yeah. know, like everybody knows now. It's not a conspiracy theory that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, right? We know that. Um, and, and we Does know... Does Colin Powell still disagree with you? No. I don't... I is he still alive? I don't know. Yeah. So if, I mean, if he's alive, he probably still disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I remember... Sorry. I remember him having to come out and, like, take the fall for that. Yeah. And be like, well, they told me and I thought... And right. I shouldn't have. Yeah. I think we used to do this, you know, the, the university I graduated from, it was, it's a Christian university in Illinois called mm-hmm. Judson. And we would bring these world leaders. So George Bush has come, you know, Condoleezza Rice, Mikhail Gorbachev, or not Mikhail, was it Mikhail Gorbachev? He might, might I would have been going back a little bit. Might've been too far, but like world leader, I think Colin Powell came. We've had all these world leaders come and do this. And I remember... I remember Colin Powell came after, I think it was Colin Powell, uh, I don't recall. Anyway, um, it's not, not relevant. Um, so the, the point, though, with the, with the dollar, though, in the, in the foreign aid, I mean, that's, there's a lot of, I mean, that was not just Iraq. It was, it was Libya and Gaddafi, you know, trying to, to create the African dollar, the African mm-hmm. competition, a different banking system, mm-hmm. um, you know, part of, you know, there's a theory that part of why Ukraine is so important is because it's important for for Russia and 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 BRICS. You know, in mm-hmm. in developing that money supply, that money system outside of the USD, which exists. And you know, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, China, and yeah, they added now uh, South Africa. Yeah. And and now Saudi Arabia, but remember, Saudi which is Ar- amazing. Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. They remember they said that Saudi Arabia would never join, and that's yeah. a that's a conspiracy theory, and that'll never happen, and that that uh, the, the 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 prime what is it? Not the prime minister. What is it? Yeah, the, the king, prince, the king <laughs> ex- uh, Yeah, the Sultan. Yeah, <laughs> right. He didn't like Putin, and they weren't on t- terms. And then you saw. The BRICS meeting in January, or in January, when Saudi Arabia joined, and Putin and and the and the print, the, the king, salt, just go with Sultan. The salt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're uh, they were like they were like high five and bring it in on the bro hug, and I'm like, whoa, this is not like the media, pre- you know, portrayed it at all. Again, who knows what? You know, maybe that means nothing, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, well, sorry, just real quick on that, like if that, if you know, if that, uh, you know, so. 
obviously, you know, if, so one of the books I read, many House of Bush, House of Sod. Yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. reading many, many, probably 25 years ago or something, 20 years ago. Um, but anyways, that's just an example, which this is very well documented, of the relationship between not only the Bush family and the Saudi royal family, but also just the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, right? So Saudi Arabia has always been one of, if not the, if not the only, sort of uh, U.S. supporter in the, of the in the Arab world, if that's the right word, um, or in the Muslim, you know, Muslim Middle East. I'll go with the Arab world if if I'm if I'm uh, being politically incorrect here. I don't apologize, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, right? And so and so for like, what's interesting to me about that about Saudi like switching sides, basically, um, at least in that way, at least through a trade agreement, but that's significant. Um, is that uh, is that it it means that the fix is in in a different way, right? Yeah. It means that like the play is you know so if they're not they're not doing that without without the agreement at the highest levels between everybody, right? They're not they're not doing that otherwise because then the U.S. would just go in with their military and there you'd have regime change um, sure. in in Saudi Arabia just like we've had in all those all these other countries. So anyway, I just wanted yeah. to add. So yeah. Mo- Mohammed bin Salman. Mm-hmm. So he's the crown prince, crown prince and prime minister. Sultan. Sultan. <laughs> all I think, whenever I hear Sultan, all I think of it is... is uh, um, Sandlot? No, uh, I don't. You need to tell me that you went home and swiped a ball that was signed by Babe Ruth, and you brought it out here and actually played with it? And actually played with it? Yeah. Yeah, but I was going to bring it back. But it was signed by Babe Ruth. Yeah. 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 You keep telling me that. Who is she? What? What? The Sultan of Swat. The King of Crash. The Colossus of Clout. The Colossus of Clout. Babe Ruth. The Great Bambino. No, uh, I don't. That's I don't. Right. No, I think of a Disney movie. What? What was it? Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Dude, in Sandlot, he's like, they're talking about Babe Ruth. And he's like, the Sultan of oh, Swat. Oh, the Sultan of Swat. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, but I'm thinking of... A yeah. more racial undertone mm. ah. of Sultan. Right. Yeah. Prince Ali, yes it is he, <laughs> Ali Ababwa. It's one of the good ones. Yeah, yeah. that's great music. You know? Great music. Yeah. They, they, put a, they put a disclaimer on that movie now, you know that? Do they? That it's like not a racial. Trigger it's warning? Not, it's not appropriate or there's... Yeah. yeah, it's I mean the inconsiderate or to something to the uh, stereotypes. The Dumbo move, the movie Dumbo, which yeah. is like I want to say like 1954 or something. Or, that really has a truly racist part. Is it? Yeah, there's like a. I think it's the workers for the, um, excuse me, for the uh, circus, are like, like caricatures of black people. Oh no, kidding. Um, yeah, it's it's like it's like. It was shocking in the nineties. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. So, so we have you know you you can start to put the pieces together with with you know global power games and currency and the underlying currency and competition to the USD, and it's a beautiful system. So there's a lot of people that want to fight for it, right? There's a lot of people who want mm-hmm. to fight for it. So, so. When you have somebody that has aligned with the U.S., like Saudi Arabia, like you've mentioned for you know for fifty plus years, I think the informal agreement was in the seventies, early seventies, seventy three, seventy four, maybe. So just after the oil crisis, probably seventy four, because I think the oil crisis was seventy three, from what I recall. Um, and so then you know you have this event where that would never happen, and then all of a sudden they join BRICS in January, and then. Even with the joining of BRICS, it didn't, it didn't get a huge media, mainstream media, uh, you know, push. Like, it wasn't a controversial thing, uh, you know. Pe- a lot of people don't even know that it happened. And then the people that did, you know, that said, holy cow, that happened. And, and the response was, well, it's not a big deal. They'll never end the, you know, they did it, but they didn't end the petrodollar. That's, you know, that's not going to happen. You know, it's interesting in and of itself and what it means for the global economy, what it means for the U.S., the U.S. dollar, Mm -hmm. the trajectory, all that, all that stuff. But it's also interesting when you think about the media coverage of it. And it didn't, it didn't make a big splash. Again, it didn't, it didn't, um, 
It wasn't plastered all over mainstream media. And even in the, you know, conspiracy alternative media world, there were a lot of doom and gloomers about it. There was a lot of extreme perspectives that are, that are always wrong. Um, right. That, that are out there about that. But there's nothing, any, there's, not, there's not a ton nuanced about it, about, you know, you know, what the implications are, the timing, what, you know, what it can mean for, you know, quality of life, buying power, inflation. And part of it is it's so complicated. It's so complex. There's so many moving parts that it's, you know, it's probably really difficult to summarize, but we're going to do our best to try and put it in some perspective. Um, there was a, there was an article I remember reading. It was, again, we'll probably, this is an alternative news source that people say, but it was on, I think it was on RT, Russia Times, or it might have been Financial Times. I'll find it. Um, but the, the, the author did a really good job explaining kind of, and I'm, I want to read some of that if I can find it. I, I want to read some of that because it was really well, well worded. It was clear and it's a nice way to summarize. But, you know, that's a, it's a big deal regardless of it doesn't mean that there's a switch flipping no. And the world is ending tomorrow. No, you know, that's that, that hyperbolic rhetoric is just, uh, you know, over time you've been here for the, you know, since, oh, yeah. since 2013. So, you know, like there was always, it was 2001 with Y2K. Then it was the Mayan calendar, 1984. Yeah, right. Mayan and, calendar, right. You know, you know and it's just. So there's been the, a lot of ends of the world. Ends of the world. It's always ending, right? And, and, and all these And if you're things, in that camp, hopefully you only bought into one. And then right, let that right. narrative And then go. you understand. Right. Yeah. And you learn from it. And, and that's difficult because the, the people that haven't lived through those younger generations or people that have just been so busy or consumed in the matrix that they don't even, you know, take the time to understand. Then the, the next one is the new, is the first one for them. Right. And that's why, that's right. why it extends. That's why these things gain steam like that. And then, you know, it's nothing really happens a lot of the time and 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 if you you think about even even some of the over the last you know 100 years well maybe 70 years mm -hmm. has there been a dramatic change from any one of these things right. or, you no, know it's more the frog in slowly boiling it's water the slow thing, it's yeah. the trend is slowly trickling or our perception of the trend right you know so i yeah uh, I'm not sure, but the the fact that the Saudi Arabia is now not trading in the petrodollar, there's some really so they're going to buy oil outside of dollars. That's the main. Well, they're. They, I mean, they're going to. I mean, sell. sell excuse oil. me. They're going to sell oil. Yeah, I outside mean, of dollars. Saudi Saudi Arabia, from the last statistics I looked at, were they were the the third. I think the third highest producer or second. Actually, I, I have it pulled up here, so let's just get right to it. Yeah, and they invest, while you looked that up, I mean, they invest also, as you mentioned, you know, a ton of money in back into the U.S., including in real estate and sports teams and, like, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the agreement, you know, like, right. like you mentioned, yeah. So let's look here. So Saudi Arabia in... In 2000, in the first quarter of 2024, Saudi Arabia produced approximately 10.6 million barrels of oil per day, which accounted for approximately 10% of the world's production. And for the entire year, they're projected to, you know, to tick that up to 10.8 million barrels per, per day on average. So in comparison, uh, the U.S. produced 12.7 million barrels per, per day and their their expected barrel per day for the full year will be 13.2 russia um was only 10 million and 10.1 for the full full year so saudi arabia is actually number two they're the, the second largest oil producer in the world next to the u.s and they're now in bricks with russia Right. So the, they're they're almost that double whole contingent, right? China. Just yeah. but just Russia and Saudi Arabia alone now mm -hmm. um are in terms, of oil, yeah. in terms of oil are 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 nearly double the US production. Now, some of that is nobody's producing 
everything they could. Everybody's producing, no. you know, there's agreements for some. I mean, isn't the number one, like, proven oil reserves in the world, isn't it Venezuela? I think it's Venezuela. I've heard that, yeah. I don't yeah, think they're yeah. producing much at this point. No, probably not. <laughs> um, let me see. There was some other really interesting here. Yeah, the um the you know the well actually I'll wait to make that point until we finish this. Actually, I'm just going to read this right now. This is a good this is a good caption here. Okay. The US the US dollar status as the world's reserve currency grants Washington significant global power as mm-hmm. a government, right? So since replacing the sterling in the 20s, the dollar has dominated international trade with key commodities like oil gold, agricultural products, and, and oil, obviously. Um, this has created a massive worldwide demand for dollars and U.S. treasuries, like we talked about, mm-hmm. um, allowing the, the government in the United States to print money extensively, borrow limitlessly, mm-hmm. limitlessly, and spend extravagantly without reflecting on the country's true produ- productivity capacity. Right. So, and, and without, because we export the dollars as well, we export that portion of the inflation. Right. Now that's a, that's a slippery slope, and we'll get to why that's a slippery slope um, when the dollar devalues and those dollars come home. That's that's when the rooster right comes. Home. Is that the what's the chickens word? are roosting something like yeah, that? Yeah, it comes home chickens to roost. Come right. home to roost. So so despite those advantages, the dollar's dominance is is being challenged by maybe more than ever from countries like China and Russia, like we yeah. just talked about as they're moving away from dollar-based transactions. This is the, t- the statistic I wanted to share. So in 2015, about 90% of their bilateral trade between China and Russia was conducted in um, the U.S. dollar. 90% in 2015. In the first between quarter... Between China and Russia? Between China and Russia. Mm-hmm. They're, they're trading between each other, bilateral yeah, that's trade. the Bretton Woods, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. First quarter of 2024... How much, what percentage of their trade was being done in... First quarter of 2024. This year. Yes. I'm going to say 28%. No. Less than 10%. So it's like, it's over. It's yeah. A, yeah. So the shift is in response to decades of what some view is, you know, the dollars, uh, the, the U.S. government in, imposing sanctions and leveraging their currency power. So interesting. Influence so China? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Is so... China still buying debt or no? U.S. debt? Uh, no? I... Th- we should look it up. I, yeah. I, it's definitely tailed off. Yeah, I mean, I know the Fed basically is buying a lot of its own, you know, the U.S. debt at this point, the U.S. Federal Reserve. Um, right. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So, yeah, so this obviously is, you know, the, the move away from the dollar is further evidenced by Saudi Arabia yeah. leaving the petrodollar agreement to, to price oil in, in ex, you know, in other currencies in mm-hmm. the U.S. So, um they they've benefited the US has benefited from that dominance because the they're a, when they do that they're able to export inflation as well which allows them to maintain these right. big military budgets to um and ultimately those you know those contracts and some of that those inputs are enriching just a small segment of the population mm-hmm. you know at expense of the entire you know population of the United States or the globe you know, domestic workforce for that matter. Um, but the, the, the emerging economies, you know, that are coming up against this, that's BRICS. Um, you know, that's where the challenge is, is, the, is more and more of, the, of those global countries, of those global powers or emerging powers move away from the dollar that creates less demand. It creates less of that synthetic or, or manufactured demand so the the U.S. has one of two things to really do. They, when there's less demand that way, actively that way, then eventually those dollars come back. So when they export the inflation, the inflation doesn't hit the U.S. market as much. But when those dollars come back, that's when the inflation really hits. Mm-hmm. So if they're not investing them back in treasuries or in U.S. goods, then those dollars just come home and all this money... It, and the, value the money goes supply, down, yeah. the, the buying power goes mm-hmm. down, right? So the only way to counteract some of that is to, you know, is foreign aid in a lot of ways, and that's why you're gonna, that's why you're seeing you're so seeing many already, billions yeah. and billions of dollars go to Ukraine, 
right? I mean, it's right. that's part of it. You know, that even September 11th, you remember, I don't know if you're, you, you probably remember this, but maybe some people don't know, like the, the day before September 11th, yep. September 11th, they lost a trillion dollars. Yep. A trillion dollars. They, they misplaced it. You know, where did it go? Well, that's, that's kind of all part of this. According to some um, estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion dollars in transactions all part of this um so i mean to summarize a lot of this it's that the u.s dollar status is his his, his, his historically empowered i'm gonna skip another dirty joke I'm... american america economically and politically on the global stage and its misuse and the strategic shifts by other nations are leading to a significant transformation in the global economic landscape Mm-hmm. That's not just, um, that's not, that's not a conspiracy theory anymore. We, 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 there's evidence for this now. And again, what can this do? Who knows, but it, it could potentially recalibrate international trade, economic alliances, the overall money system. You know, we know the quantum financial system is running parallel already. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. You know, who, who knows for sure, but you know, the, the one silver lining, I guess, for, for the U.S. or U.S. manufacturers are, you know, industries that primarily export from the United States, they benefit from a depreciated dollar, making their goods, you know, more competitive globally. So, mm-hmm. that, you know, that's, that's kind of like where we're at in a nutshell, right? Yeah, and I don't, like, I don't know if people, you know, some people, of course, do. I don't know if people, the, certainly the vast majority of people don't understand or appreciate what, the artificial what a what a strong currency does for your quality of life cost of living those kinds of things right so you know again these these agreements have all been made at the highest levels Mm -hmm. so when you you know the agreement of hey china will keep its currency artificially low Mm -hmm. and they'll export to the world Mm -hmm. and the u.s will have this sort of art this will, will have this artificial demand for their currency keeping the standard of living high in the u.s and allowing and putting them in position they wouldn't otherwise be in to be the military, military and economic power of the world, right? So that's that's done through the money system. Like that's done through these agreements. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the you know a lot of the places in the world that we consider to be poor, what does that mean? Like it doesn't mean that they're resource poor. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even necessarily mean they're poorly run, although that can go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. But it, 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 in many in many ways, it just means that the the way that those countries fit into the global economic plan is to keep their currencies devalued. Right. And so, and so, um, you know, if 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 the dollar devalues in a significant way, not only like not only is it going to destroy people's lives and and sort of the, the 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 standard of living that the U.S. has, but the U.S. is in a unique position. In terms of from where it's falling from mm-hmm. versus when we've seen this in other countries, um, it's also it's also uh, it's also in a, what was something else I was going to say and then I forget. But yeah, so you know, I just don't know that people like appreciate what this means for their lives right. in terms of these kinds of agreements and what's in place and what isn't. You know, the U.S. has the U.S. has enforced um, the petrodollar and you know these all these different machinations we talked about through their military forever. Um, Obviously, the decision has been made on this particular thing that just took place with Saudi Arabia to not do that. Right. Saudi Arabia is the is the U.S.'s, you know, go fetch it. Like, they're, they've been in the U.S.'s pocket forever. Now, I don't pay attention anymore at all, mm-hmm. and we should get into that in a minute because that's the right. joys of living in a place like this joy. when this kind of stuff goes on. But, um, but yeah, so... So, right. So, like, you know, what does that what does that mean for your life, for your for your assets, for investments, you know, all that kind of stuff? Like, this is important, right? So if you if you are on if you do understand this stuff or if you do have because, you know, look, the 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 mainstream narrative isn't going to be what we're talking about. Right. Right. The mainstream narrative is going to be always that everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, maybe the other party is destroying the world. But but in general, everything's fine. Right. That's always going to be. The mainstream narrative. So if you buy into that, cool, like, you know, do your research or don't, but, you know, you're, you're probably going to f- just stay the course for the most part. Right. Um, but if you do understand this stuff or you buy into sort of these ideas um, or this makes sense to you, you know, thinking about, okay, what does this mean for 
What does this mean for my job? What does this mean for asset prices? What does this mean for the future of the country of, you know, X, Y, and Z, my kid, you know, what does all these things mean? I mean, these were kinds of the, the these were the kinds of thoughts and decisions I was having again in 2012, sure. you know, preparing for, preparing for what ultimately became a totally different life in Ecuador, where, you know, my, my value now, I was getting an MBA at the time, mm -hmm. like that was no longer interesting to me. Right. And, and, you know, my values became like, like I measure my success as like, how much time do I get to spend at the river <laughs> every day? In the same like, room. You're right, 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 right. <laughs> so, you know, like how much, how, what kind of lifestyle are my kids living, right? Like are, how close to nature are they? How happy are they? How not stressed are they? Mm -hmm. How much pressure do they not feel? Mm -hmm. um, right. I, you know, the, the quality of my food, the quality of my, of my over, my, my, uh, I, I, I shouldn't say, it. I'm going to say it just to make you laugh. The, the quality of like my hormonal levels, like my, yeah. you know, what, le cor what levels of stress do I have in my life? Um, you know, how, how good am I sleeping? Yeah. Right. Like the quality of my relationship. So, um, you know, so, so, right. So that, you know, that became, you know, that was my value. But at the time, at the time when I was leaving, it was more like, oh my God, yeah, all this stuff's going to happen yeah. and I don't want to be in New York for any of this. Yeah. And I'm out of here. Right. right. And that a lot of that is because it's like your first realization, your first look behind the curtain. Exactly. You know, and seeing exactly. the wizard behind, you know, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtains exactly. is the guy. You know, when, when you first get through some of this stuff and you have that realization, it's it's a little terrifying in a way. And it can be. Right. And and that's where that's where some of the nuance is important and some of the perspective and, you know, you mentioned the boiling frog analogy mm -hmm. and that's, you know, you can, you can show, we can, we can look at, we can pull up charts from the federal reserve and look at money supply, money in circulation, mm -hmm. federal debt. We can show a couple different things that will, that will explain this and they'll show you the chart of those. It'll show the trend over the last, you know, 70 years mm -hmm. or so. Right. And they're trending up and they're trending up and you know, the first major, you know, and we've had like the 2000.com around, you know, we've had a couple other little blips, the two, you know, the 87 savings and loan, there was a little blips, but, mm -hmm. but the first, the first material, like standard deviation changes yeah. were the, the subprime crisis in 07, 08. Right. And then, you know, the COVID, you know, COVID mm -hmm. thing <laughs> um, in, in 2000, right. Or, tw or 2020. Mm -hmm. So when you look at these charts, you're going to see things going up, you know, and, and then you're going to see these huge, these two huge standard deviation, multiple standard deviation changes. Now, what, what's interesting to core, you know, to, to correlate that to is inflation, you know, because inflation isn't a necessary evil. It's right, not, not it's, a, it's built now, into the money system. It's built into the money system to steal labor. There's reasons why, like we've kind of covered a lot of that, but it's not necessary. Um, however, the system does work pretty amazingly. It's, it's an amazing system. Like, I, well, especially if you're genius. trying to enslave a it's species. Gen <laughs> it's a genius, it's a genius system. But the point I want to make is that, you know, the inflation people, you know, we kind of make fun. We, they, they found a way they, I don't know who. They found a way to make us like laugh, have fun with inflation, like with your right, on your right, birthday. Right. Here's your birthday on this day in 1979. Right, gas right. costs 79 cents, and a gallon of milk costs a quarter, and a movie ticket costs a dollar, and right. you know, and they they make us like feel good. It's oh, it's nostalgic. I remember yeah. when you know, like no, that's because they've robbed. Look how much they've robbed from us, <laughs> yeah. right? So so. So the boiling, you know, they do it in a way they, or they have historically done it in a way like a boiling frog because they don't want us to know. Mm -hmm. Now we've had these couple of events in 07, 08 mm -hmm. and 2020 where, you know, they're showing not, now there's no way to not show it. It's it anymore. So now, um, you can see what inflation has done in the U S over time, looking at prices and looking at money supply. And we'll sh again, we'll show those graphs. And then we'll show 2007 and eight, mm -hmm. and we'll show 2020, yep. and you'll see where where do you think that's solved? Where, where eventually that that is felt by the people, mm -hmm. and the people whose living standard, quality of life, and buying power are going to be influenced the most are the people in the United States that are on. 
that system. Mm -hmm. And I know people are going to say, well, Ecuador is on the U.S. dollar. You know, and, you know, there's several other countries that are on the U.S. dollar. And it's and it's different. You know, it's completely different. It's I mean, I, I mean, Ecuador would just switch currencies. They would switch no currencies. No harm, no foul. And and the you know, we've discussed this before, but the just as the U.S. dollar in the United States has different buying power in different states. Mm -hmm. New York buys different than Louisiana. Um, the U.S. dollar is different here. It acts differently here. It's actually physical here. It's you know, the it. It's imported from the United States, you know, from Ecuadorians right. working there. Um, so, and it's and it's actually physical. There's not there's not nearly the well. It's the supply and demand of how much is imported versus the, the what's in the country. Yeah, versus and, the economy and the physical country. dollars in the U.S. Everything's dig everything. Everybody's debit and credit cards and and cashless. And so I wonder how does that work. How does that work? I have no idea. I, you probably don't either. But how does that work in Ecuador, right? Like, so in the in the state, in the rest of the world, in the whole world, so it has to be the same in Ecuador. But you know, when a bank lends you money, mm -hmm. they don't have the money. They're the money is created based off the value of your signature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're basically monetize. They're monetizing the fact that you owe them back money, right? right. So they're monetizing the instrument, the thing you sign. Mm -hmm. Uh, gets monetized, and the money gets then created out of thin air and put into your account. How does that work? In Ecuador, like is that? Yeah, I'm is sure the there's same? agreements. I'm sure there's international agreements, right? Yeah, it's it's just debits and credits on a computer screen. Sure. So that, it, well, I mean that's it, right? But so like the so like an Ecuadorian bank that's lending money into existence, it's still obviously USD. Mm -hmm. But well, they're probably borrowing it from an overnight. You know, they're they're some, yeah, you know, it's yeah, just yeah. a debit and credit. It's mm -hmm. like it's a T account. They, Put, pulling it from here and adding it here, and mm -hmm. then they're going to pay interest here that they don't have, you know. Like, yeah. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, which is part of the reason. I, also, that's another question I had, which I never looked up. Did Ecuador, when they, like, let's, when they, when they dollarized, right, and they went from the sucre to the dollar in 2000, and they imported, and I like that word, it's literally an import, right. and, it, and it has the same sort of um, pricing mechanism that an import has as well, which is, which is, I think, important part of that equation, but... When they imported all that all that USD, um, was that? I assume that that was like how, like because obviously in the money system, all the money gets borrowed into existence. Normally, mm -hmm. the central bank is issuing it, and then you owe it back to the central bank plus interest. Mm -hmm. Essentially, there's obviously more mechanisms, but that's essentially what's taking place. So when they borrowed the initial USD, is that something they owe back to the U.S. That's Federal Reserve question. plus right. interest? Who knows? Like, I'm curious about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You know, that 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 made me think of another, you know, how deep this actually goes because, you know, we talked about how the U.S. creates this demand, you know, this inorganic demand for dollars by exporting them as foreign aid mm -hmm. and all these agreements and then military protection and 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 just dollars in general, like literally pallets of money, mm -hmm. um, and they run these these deficits, right? Well, you know, you know this, but and maybe everybody doesn't. But you know, gross domestic product, what does it include? Oh, I don't. I couldn't tell you. Oh, it includes government spending. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so when the government's running, it's running a deficit and actually counting that as gross domestic product. Right, right. <laughs> like, right. It's like, fantastic. Like, what? Right. Like, what a beautiful... Right. I mean, it's genius. Right. It's a genius system. And Yeah, it is. The whole thing is genius. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't have a solution. I wish I had a system well, I mean, that I think would be like, hey, mm -hmm. this is the system. I mean, it just has to be... In, it, just, it just has to not be debt-based, and then almost any system can work. Well, right. No, no debt is is a huge part. It can't of be it. borrowed into existence. Like that's that's the evil. It's not like everyone has different ideas about what current what should be currency and like mm -hmm. what should work as currency. I think a lot of them are okay ideas. The main thing is just that it's not borrowed into existence. Right, like, and that's the that's the thing that's hard to settle on because you know there's going to be there has to be some either finite or agreed upon source. Yeah, that will be that. That it's yeah, not but those like, are I don't know. To me, those are kind of like simple solutions because we're just talking about mediums of exchange. Like it's not hard to discover value. Like well, discovering the value. About, yeah, yeah. So but, you just but, need a medium of exchange. No, it's not that simple. You you know this firsthand. Mm -hmm. Explaining to somebody what value is. <laughs> right. All right. We can't talk about that reference, but um, but yeah, but I mean, I mean, like, you know, the world is a market. 
And sure. so and so value is being discovered constantly mm-hmm. all the time in everything. So discover, to me, like discovering what value is and, and had we made the different decision at that time, the value would have been discovered very quickly of what, you know, of what it is or what it isn't. But, but, but in fact, yeah, anyways, but, um, but right. So, 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 you know, just like price discovery, like I That's think it's different. Yeah. But it's not easy though. Like you're saying, oh, it's easy. It's just simple. I don't think that would be an easy, smooth thing to settle on yeah. what is valuable. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not easy or smooth necessarily in, like, international, internationally, like, in terms of, oh, like, an locally. international climate. I mean, that's that's kind of the beautiful thing, even where we are, in that even if the dollar goes away, most people are, it's not like people are running these huge deficits, right? Per, household deficits, no. at least in our community. We shared those statistics. No, we shared those, you shared those statistics on the pod, which, you know, we don't have now, but the the, the difference per capita like we're all doing per capita the difference per capita both in in countrywide debt and national debt as well as personal as well as personal debt the difference was it was orders of magnitude right. and we tried to normalize it by in you know using differences in income you know you know standard income here versus the u.s as well and it was still still different you know um but but the thing even if there was some mad max type scenario which is what all the all the all the main, um, or main, all the, all the coverage that I could find. It's like, it's like the mainstream alternative. Yes. Yes. All the alternative, the mainstream alternative <laughs> sources, they're the hyperbolic, yeah. you know, fear, fear, fear. It's not any different than CNN. It's yeah, fear, 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 yeah, fear. Yeah, exactly. So those are, you know, that even, even if that situation were to take place, like I 100% believe it would be different here because most people have a garden, have chickens, have cows, or they have businesses that are not reliant. You know, there's you and know, there's no supply chain. There's no, there's supply, no supply chain, chain. and people already barter for stuff all the time. Right, it's commonplace. That's what I was going to say. Like and, price discovery here has been easy forever through just that you know very simple systems right. like barter. Because simpletons like us, right. you know, are attracted to this place because it's That's, was that a Pedro reference? Simple. No, that no. was no, okay. no, that was somebody called the simpletons. <laughs> oh, simple minds, God. and you know, and ah, yes. you know, something like that. Yes, it's just I'm like, okay you with know. whatever you, whatever you think about me. Yeah, it only reflects on you, right? Friend. I mean, it's, I mean, I like to say that if if that's what you think, maybe you're overcomplicating happiness. <laughs> you <laughs> right. know, right? That's a great point. Perhaps. Yeah. So, um, right. So, I mean, I think that that part, that piece, shouldn't be missed, and you didn't miss it. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are some, you know, that's some of the things that this place solves for, mm-hmm. right? So it, you know, it, it it's not going to change you as a person. Nope. It's not going to solve your issues in life. It's not going to do any of that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, not a, gosh, a canvas, but there's a better word for it. It's a, <laughs> anyway, mm. um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a place you know, Earth is like a container, you know, like the like, right, you can live in different places on Earth. They have a little bit different characteristics from one another. But at the end of the day, you're there. Right. So this place is no different. You know, it, what it has for me, again, for what I'm looking for is spectacular. So if you're looking to, you know, if you're looking to heal, if you're looking to slow down, if you're looking to be close to nature, if you're looking to be in a community that's more heart centered, you know, more human um, this place is ideal for all of that. If you're looking to solve for some of the things we talked about today, like risks, right? Like if you're looking, Hey, like I'm concerned, you know, what my, what my mansion in Malibu is going to be worth if, if the dollar collapses or if the debt or if the current, you know, the, if the, uh, if we have a debt, a major debt crisis and people don't have access to credit markets, you know, what is my, what, whatever asset class we're talking about, if you're concerned about that, um, this place solves for a lot of that stuff. Um, and I think, you know, I think that's why part of the reason why a lot of people are here is also sort of, you know, I think what I'd like to emphasize in that is sort of the magic of the community. Right. So like the the being attracted to what's here, yes. you know, like that to me is really important because there's no there's no life. There's no energy in sort of, you know, running away from something like it might be where someone is at it's where i was at at one point like it might be where someone is at and it might be a good decision it might be important and it might lead to all the other things you you know might lead to good things but but there are like there are people who have come here and are still in that right like come here and they're terrified of everything and they're literally they're creating a very small world world for themselves here 
and they le- that's why they left the last place they were at because of that right. same those same fears, right? And look, I mean, you can if if you want to be in fear, you can. It doesn't matter when, where, what, how, and none of yeah. your circumstances matter at all. Like if you right. want to be in fear, you can you can do that. But yeah, if you if you want to, you know, sort of open up and like kind of really do life in a different way, like this is an awesome place to do it. Right. One of the most proliferated I don't know if that's the right word, but the most printed religious texts in modern, in the modern world, the Bible, you know, what, what this, this quote is, is, is in the Bible 300 plus times. You know what that is? You told me the other day, I forgot. Do not fear. Yeah, it's beautiful. Over and over three, 350, maybe more. I can't recall exactly, yeah. but it's, it's a ton. Yeah. 365. I don't, I don't remember a, a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be genius if it was 365, one for every day. <laughs> the year but was that so was that before or after they changed the calendar perhaps yeah it's how many days in the calendar i forget i don't either yeah. i don't know but we got it now we got like leap years and all yeah, kinds of weirdness true. based yeah. on but still 300 plus times yeah do not fear do not fear do not fear i mean it's again that's a hard it's a hard one to you know like there's a difference from being startled and and be and being fearful and then there's also right. a difference from being fearful and then you know, the story you tell yourself about that fear or the actions you take after experiencing that phenomenon. And, you know, those are much different things. I mean, that's like a really important distinction, differentiation, right? There's, there's instinctual fear to save your life. Right. That doesn't fight la- or flight. Fight or flight, right. That doesn't last more than in general, like a minute or two. And in a terrible situation, like if you're at war or something, then, you know, it's going to be more. But... But those are short, like, that's a very short thing where it's like, oh, my life is in danger. You know, I have to react. Mm -hmm. That's a very different thing than living afraid than like living in fear, creating that, you know, creating that dynamic for yourself because, you you know. And and oftentimes it's not even that we've created it. I mean, I guess we've created it for ourselves in the sense that we've allowed ourselves to be so consumed by a system and so plugged in and 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 programmed in a way that, you know, there's so much stress and it's so cumulative that your cortisol levels are so high that it's just like, ah, you know, you're just wound up and sprung and, mm-hmm. and you're seeing, you, you see that in folks, you see yeah. that in, in people. In I mean, we lived it. We did. Like, I, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I'm 11 years in, I'm still deprogramming and unwinding from yeah. that, yeah, you hard. know? Um, yeah. And you see, and you see what, you know, you see what people have made that choice to, because you first you have to want you have to kind of know it's there to some degree yeah right you have to you can't be totally what is it can't through, see the forest through the something fog or something trees trees <laughs> there thank you not fog Ooh. trees <laughs> it wouldn't make sense if it was fog um so you can't see the forest through the trees like you can't fully be in that right you have to like have a little bit of perspective to even realize wait this is not how i want to feel or this is not what i want to live in or this is right but so if you've gotten to that point and you started to look like what are the other options, both mentally, physically, in every way, right? But if this place has come up on your radar, <clears throat> you know, you come down here and to watch people, even at the very beginning, like go through that, like those initial unwind processes, it's really beautiful. Yeah. I'm um, like, again, I'm 11 years in, I'm still going, th- I'm still, on, I'm still finding layers in me that I can that I, that I st- that I live in stress still or I live in fear still or mm-hmm. I or I have um or I have programmed thoughts about that aren't actually mine and I don't know where they came from and don't make any sense to me if mm-hmm. I actually think about them right. but like you know I have to say this to my kids or I have to do this when this person and it's all nonsense like the tr- you know it's all nonsense the truth is like all you have to do is be in balance and be in your heart all the time and then you everything in your life works and makes sense and like that's from my perspective like that's the truth um but there are places that uh, that um, encourage more or less degree more or less degrees of that, right? So you know, partly and this gets very conspiratorial, but that's okay. You know, partly um, the design of the system globally, but the design of the system in the more developed areas, it's more advanced that way. Mm-hmm. Um, the design of the system is to keep you in that in that afraid, high stress, sure. you know, running on the hamster wheel keep place up with the Joneses. So right for all kinds of reasons. So, um, you know, so when you're when you've grown up in that, like when that's all you know, mm-hmm. and then you get the opportunity. I mean, anyone's had this experience, right? Like you just you spend the day at the lake and you just feel better. 
Right. But then your but then your mind and you your your mind and the system says, well, you can't do that very often, because you gotta you gotta wake up tomorrow morning and go to work. Like mm-hmm. you gotta wake right. And so, and so we're sort of. Like somewhere in us, we know like that's a better life. Right. Let's go but, to the ocean for a weekend. Right. Uh, let's make it a month. Right. <laughs> right. Let's make it two months. Right. You know? So yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's you know when you think about that, you know, I've got you know friends and family members that it doesn't matter how much money they make. They're, you know, it, it's because there's always more. You know, and, well, it, it's always not enough. Exactly. Right. Yeah. There's always more to earn, but there's always, you know, it's not enough. It's not enough. There's, you know, well, what about this? What about that? You know, and, yep. you know, that's this, you know, that's kind of one of the differences between the scarcity and abundance mindset. Mm-hmm. Even though somebody with a scarcity mindset can accumulate massive amounts of money, mm-hmm. it, they're, they're, they're living in a, in, a, in a reality that it's not enough. That's right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the trap, right? Because what do you compare it to? Right. You're always, if you're in that mindset, you're always, always going to compare it to the next level. Yeah. Like even, even like the top three richest people on earth right. have each other yeah. to compare themselves right. to. Right. And then all the guys that they don't know about, they, they know about the guys that we don't know about. <laughs> you know, they're richer yeah, right, than right, those right, three. Right. Know, well, I mean them. They're not on the Forbes yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. If you're on the Forbes list, you know about the guys that are not on the Forbes list. Right. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, Yeah. Food for thought, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. yeah, I know. We'll see, man. It's interesting times, you know, because you've got all this stuff happening, you know, both with, you know, with the U.S., with, with you know, the, the dollar as reserve currency, with, you know, different countries internationally. And you've got, you know, you've got the, you know, perhaps the biggest false dichotomy in the world with the U.S. election happening here in November. And is it though? Is it? Is it what? We can't get into that debate on the pod. Is it a false dichotomy? Yeah, I mean, certainly politics, left, right, all that is a. False well, that's dichotomy. what this is. I mean, this is like a like, hyper extreme example of that. It, perhaps, perhaps. I mean, on that on that level on that level for sure. Yes, yes. of course it is. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and and and, and we saw that. I mean, the debate is coming up. Like, oh, did gosh. you think that there was going to be a debate? There's I a mean, debate. Well, well, here's the thing, right? I I don't get to even. So I don't know what you're referencing. I guess you're referencing Biden's mental state, probably. But but like I'm so out, I get to be so out of paying attention to these things that I don't know what you're talking it's about. It's so entertaining. You're missing yeah. like Kabuki yeah, I theater it, <laughs> on the on this level right now is yeah like fab. It's more entertaining than Saturday Night Live ever was. Like yeah. a, any type What's of the- comedy. <laughs> You 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 like I mean, this is better than any basically other. just WWE that people think is real, <laughs> but it's wave it's it's hilarious, dude. It's hilarious. They're going to debate, like that's great. Right, they're going to debate. I think on CNN, I think CNN's hosting it, or it was one of the biggest big news networks is holding hosting it. They let they let Biden won the coin flip. I guess. Yeah. I just read this. I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess Biden won the coin flip, and he got to either pick choose his podium, or which. I didn't even think that would matter. <laughs> yeah. Or or he got to choose the order of the questions, right? And I'm thinking, all right, well, if I win the coin flip and you and I are debating, I'm 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 speaking second, right? Like you just think, you wouldn't you want me to speak first yeah, in the debate? You want to be able to respond. You sure. want to be able to to speak second, yeah. right? He chose the podium. President Biden won a coin flip and got to choose whether he wanted to pick his podium position or the order of closing statements. He picked the right side of the stage, so Donald Trump picked having the last word. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's what I mean. It's like, like how, that, that's a script, right? Like, it's gotta like, be, yeah. right? But so, even the whole thing, like, like, is that is anyone actually choosing anything? Uh, well, the fact that this even came out as a story, yeah, I mean, that's I mean why it's whole, entertaining? So, like, that's out as, as a story, but the end of the end of the petrodollar, Isn't that, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. That's right. what I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's priceless. Yeah. It's priceless. Like, and then and then the you know, let's see how we've seen all these instances of of Biden, and we get it both ways. You know, Trump yeah. stumbles on words and forgets names too. Like they're they're not young men, and <laughs> I, mean, I forget words. I forgot words half a dozen times on this show. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I, I stumbled on the same word like sixteen times in one sentence. But so, but but these are not young men, and they're not middle aged men, <laughs> and Which and we are. By and the they way. stumble, and and Biden. I mean, listen, I I I've seen people that have dementia. I have family members that have 
some stage of Alzheimer's and dementia or dementia, it seems very clear to me, obviously I'm not a doctor, that he has some of those signs. Oh, I mean, guy can't walk. Yeah. And Much less talk. <laughs> so, so, and we've seen him recently in certain instances where he's publicly speaking and you're like, how is he going to debate? And then I remember the election the last time, all of a sudden, it's like he's hopped up on, you know, like, oh, it's a conspiracy, he's on drugs. And like, it, the conspiracy is, is that even the real Joe Biden? <laughs> you right, know? Right, right. Which Joe Biden is that? And yeah. who's going to come to the debate? And I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. It's entertaining. Yeah, you're man. entertained by it. No, I know I'm you are. I'm so entertained by it. No, I mean, so here's like, you know, here's like, and we're different people, right? Like, we're allowed to be different people. Are we? Like, here's. Oh, <laughs> wait a second. They don't wait, know what do you're you honest, referencing. Do, well, do you believe that? On one level, absolutely. On one level. Yes. Okay. I'll let it go. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we're different people, right? So um, so, so who I am and my story, who you are, your story, right? So I, so I got down here 11 years ago. And when I got down here, I was fully bought in to not the mainstream narrative at all, right. but like fully bought into like paying attention mm -hmm. to what's going on and also having some concern if not fear about it right like oh. i was like i was in that when i came in 2013 um you know what would happen with this what would happen with that wondering about this wondering about that um right so and some of the those things seem to be playing out right that i was worried about then sure. right but but you know it did well, i don't not that year <laughs> no not that year Decades and also later. also it doesn't matter at the end of right the day. but but like what so you know i'm that so I don't know the exact timeline of, you know, but I've gotten to the point over the last few years, at least, where I literally, when, like, when I say I pay zero attention, I actually mean zero. Like, I actually mean zero. Like, I don't know. It's not that I don't ever see a headline or I, someone don't hear a conversation or something, so I don't know, like, I, like I'm aware that there's a conflict going on, in, you know, in Ukraine, for example. I'm aware of, you know, things that are happening. But not because I chose to look at it, like, at all. Um, and, and some people, you know, that's going to trigger some people. They're going to, oh, you're being irresponsible and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. The, for me in my life, it doesn't help me, right? For me in my life, like, I'm not, I don't find, I don't find any entertainment in like, in, like, these things. Now, it's not to say I couldn't watch something for 30 seconds and laugh. Like, see the, the, see the humor, right? I'm not. Like, so, but hold on. Let me just, so, so like, the... For me, right, like where I'm at, I find that energy of like that stuff like repulsive. It like yeah. it bothers me. It's like it's like, uh, oh, I, so that's amazing. how I feel. Right. So I keep it out of my like I keep it out of my world. OK, now you got here three years ago, approximately. Yeah. So you got here three years ago from the States, from Chicago. So it's like a little bit more of a recent time frame. Mm -hmm. Now, you're pretty detached. Like I would say like you. You probably went through the same detaching I went through during the same time. You just did it in the States, right? So you, right. So you had already came here, like, very detached. And totally. there was, like, lessons I learned from you about that, you know, getting to know you. Um, but, but, and I think this is a process for everyone, you pay a little more attention than I do. And partly that's probably just because, you know, you, you just have an interest and you have... Uh, you know, you have a finance background and you have well, friends back this home that this and that. Right, that we, right. That we enjoy. Banter. So, but it's just kind of interesting for me to like, to like, you know, just to look at those two different paths. But it's like, the funny thing about that too is like on the spectrum, like you're not bought in at all and you don't have any really interest in this stuff so much at all. You, there's some things you like to like understand and think about yeah. maybe that I don't, but like that's the difference, right? right, right. And, and so, to, so you know, the two of us would be really far on that spectrum for back home. Yeah. And yet we, you know, here there's like a difference that way. Right. right it's just yeah. kind of like indicative of this place right. and who's here and like, yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? I don't know. You're going to watch the debate? No. Yes. Definitely It'll be not. fun. If you put together, or someone will, if someone puts together a highlight reel of the, the funny moment, The whole thing moments, is going to be a highlight. The entire thing is going to yeah. be a funny moment. I mean... Yeah, but I not to me. I'd well, rather... I mean, we're gonna. Get, I'm gonna get roasted for that. Like, it's so serious. It's a very serious thing. This debate, right? It's the you know, the tipping point of whether America crashes and burns or doesn't. 
Like right. that's that's the yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing the that people up. don't understand. Like those decisions are made at higher levels. Right. 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 Those decisions are just not made at that level. I always make that. I always make the, the when I when I talked about it to friends back home, and I always it's typically through a text chain, and it's mm-hmm. always like when the next president, you know, the next election. It's not election. I always the you know, election, like. Did you yeah. mean elect? No, selection. Selection. Right. It's already. It's already determined. No, I mean, it's like, like the vote harder idea. Yeah. Right. You know, right. I mean, right. Just, right. We're, everything is going to change if we just vote harder. I mean, yeah. how many times have people got the person they wanted in? Was it be- like? Did it solve all your problems? It at all? Like. Right. Yeah. Like in any way. That's the false paradigm. I mean, I remember. Right. That's- so I was still bought in. When Obama was elected. Yeah. Right? I was still bought in then. So when, when Obama was elected, I was thrilled at that time. Politically, that's where I was at. Right? So I, I was thrilled. And I was, re- I was really... Hope like, and <laughs> change. change. Right? I was really like... I was really wanting the things that he talked about to happen. Yeah. So, you know, they were going to close Guantanamo and they were going to like label GMOs and they were going to do all this stuff. Right. And, and he a lot. He's so charismatic. Oh, he's no, a brilliant actor. But <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things that were being proposed by him, like I got totally swept up in it. Right. So, mm-hmm. so, and then, and then, uh, let's see. So that was, what year was he? Oh eight? Oh eight. Okay. So he was oh he was oh eight to sixteen, correct? That's math. Um oh eight to sixteen. Um so when he went by the time he finished his second term, we'll see, even the first term was two thousand twelve. So that was right when I was figuring all this stuff out. It was two thousand like ten, eleven, twelve. Mm. So so I was no longer in on Obama. And, and then when I looked at it during his second term, and I'm looking at it more like r- with the pers- distance, right? And I'm realizing, you know, nothing he s- promised, not one thing that he promised he actually did. Now, I, I don't even necessarily b- have believed at that point that the things he promised were good anymore. That, right. that's, there's all, that's all another conversation. But, but just for people who liked what he had to say and... Six years later, eight years later, five years, we're still supporters, or even after his second term, still supporters. I mean, why would you support someone who lied to you about everything, right? right? And and it's not, Obama's not special with that. That's every single politician. politician. Right. right. So, you know, to I don't know, it's, gosh, to keep going through those cycles and keep getting swept up in it and, and keep getting wrapped up. Time. This is the time, right. Right. Yeah. right. And, and And people probably don't recall that, you know, what materially changed under Obama, you know, and, and uh, impacting an average person's day to day life. Right. You know, and, and this is a this is a president that that had a supermajority in the House and the Senate. Exactly. So he could have done, he all done whatever stuff. he, he really wanted. wanted to. Right. All that right? stuff like, could have yeah, happened. Supermajority. Yeah. Like, well, that's kind of the game, too. Right. They 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 generally speaking, there's always something that gets in the way <laughs> right, right? Right, right. of like of like accomplishing whatever it is that, right. you know, you said you were trying yeah. to accomplish. And that's the ants and the grasshoppers. That's the whole parable of the ants and the grasshopper. I don't you know, know that the one. ants, because the, gra- the politicians, the powers that be, they, them, they, <laughs> demons, uh, they, they, they um, they're the grasshoppers, right? We, the people, you know, the average people are all the ants, and mm. they just want to control us and keep... Stay in the, you know, keep going through the motion, stay on the wheel, keep gathering food, keep gathering food, stay, you know, stay distracted. Here, look at this circus, look at this comedy, look at this movie, look at this, stop, look at these sports, you know, they've done it, you know, look at the, you know, the, you know, the, what is it, gladiators, you know, they've done it for, yeah, for, right. for civilizations, circuit, yeah. after civilization, and it's, you know, it, because the, fo- the, the ants don't realize how powerful they are, right, united, right. as one. Right. It's that movie, too. <laughs> it was an Ants. It is it's one of those yeah, movies. Yeah, it's a great movie. So, no, it was A Bug's Life. A Bug's, Bug's Life. Was, yeah, ants, too, probably. That had a good message in one of those. Bug's I don't know Life which was one a great, was, but... great one. And I, don't, I think Ants is the one with Sylvester Stallone was one of the voices. Right. Bug's Life was the Pixar one. All right, so then let me ask you a question. Since you understand this so well, and you've, and you've articulated it so beautifully, Did I, I didn't... and you are fully correct, how much football are you going to watch this year? 
a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the, Bears, the Bears got Caleb Williams, and Keenan Allen, and DeAndre Swift. They're going to be fun. They're going to be. It's going to be the funnest Bears team I can watch in a long time. Yeah. Well, the Bears have never are not usually very good. They're not very good usually. They're in gonna our, be, they're going to be fun. It's in our be, lifetime, and I get. How does it feel? Did you, did you know? We're middle-aged. I was thinking about this earlier. Yeah. All right. I got to go. We got to go. We're going to go eat and do some other stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, if you guys made it this far, again, <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> I am really, really sorry, but I'm just please. grateful. I'm going to go with great. I, I, I'm sorry. He's grateful. I'm grateful, too, but I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> please like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a future topic you'd like us to discuss... Or if you want to correct us on anything we've said, <laughs> put us, put us, uh, send us some comments or send us an email to info at abequador.com. And if you'd like to check this area out, we'd love to see you down here one day. So until then, we'll see you next time. Ciao, guys. Thank you, everyone. Where's your microphone? Oh, excellent. Good, because he's been recording so we can do this in the outtakes. Yeah, that's not a good idea. It is a good idea. Good. It is. Well... I just, it's too bad they can't appreciate the full costume that I have going here. Well, I got the indigenous linen shirt, which kind of feels like it's not actually, it might be plastic. And then we've got, <laughs> then we've got the, the mushroom hat. It's a little, I mean, it's, it's a little fibrous. Well, linen is fibrous, but it feels like there might, you're right, there might be like some acrylic little spandex. Oh. Along with that. And then I've got the mushroom hat. Yeah. I've got the mic on the mushroom hat. And then I've got stained basketball shorts. That's gross. And, well, they're not dirty. They're just a little bit stained. They look gross. And then, and then I look delicious, bro. And then, what is and on, then what is the sandals. Hat? It's a mushroom hat? What's, what does it say? Lef? What does it say? Lef or something? I don't know. Lef, what is it? Michael gave it to me. Michael. Michael that we saw yesterday at oh. Soul Bistro. Mushroom Mike. Mushroom Mike. <laughs> and I rock it with pride. Not that kind of pride, bro. Uh, well, it's pink. It is pink. And a, it's Pride Month. Is it Pride Month? Is it proud to live in Vilcabamba? Well, I'm proud. Yeah, I am. I'm proud that you can live in Ecuador and not know it's Pride Month. Yeah. Yes, that is... Everybody think their heterosexual parents for their existence. Paul <laughs> <laughs> is the Lord. <laughs> yeah? What's going on? It's going in, bro. I mean, it's kind of a thing. Yeah, it is kind of a thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, they'll be doing it in the lab soon anyway. I mean, aren't they already? Probably. Yeah. I mean, when, when when did they announce that they had... It was in the 90s that they announced that they had cloned a yeah, sheep. Yeah, remember the sheep? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the baby right after I was that. in junior high school. I forget what the name of the a baby. baby what? A baby girl. Remember they named what? her? Yeah, don't no. you remember? It was fame. It was super what are fame. What talking about? They're yes. still saying that human cloning doesn't exist, No, bro. I totally remember. All right, I'm looking this at this is some right Mandela now. Effect. I guarantee... The Mandela Hold Effect on. right Let's now. Let's see. Um... Probably, it's probably reported as a fraud. Fraud. This is the Mandela Baby effect. Baby right girl cloned 1990s. No, dude. What are you talking 90s? about? This is Mandela effect. Straight 2000s. Up. You actually have this memory? I do. They claim to this day that humans have never been cloned, dude. What are you talking about? Shut up. No, I guarantee. No, you're going to be wrong. I'm going to find it. You, you didn't find it immediately? I, I will find it. <laughs> I put fraud baby girl clone. <laughs> like, no, what? just put, just put baby, just put, have they ever cloned a baby girl? No, girl? that's not what you would do. Why not? If you want to find the answer, no, then that's what you would do. But how would there be a story would you, that... Would you just let me, you do what you want to do. I'm I am, to I'm talking to you, yeah, that's what I want to do. You just, it's so annoying sometimes, you don't <laughs> stop talking. Gosh. You're just upset that you're wrong, bro. I'm not, no, I'm just upset that your voice is so <laughs> whiny. <laughs> it's two days in a row I'm you've been a, talking about my voice. I'm allowing you. I'm allowing you. I'm giving you. I'm, I'm, 
I said it so well the other day on the what pod. What did you say? I'm, uh, I'm granting you... I'm, I was um, cleaning my, thumb, my fingernails with a toothpick. I think I should probably not put it back in my mouth. It's a great idea. Human clone... Okay, well, have you proved yourself wrong yet? No, I'll find it. You're searching for a long time. <laughs> I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start the pod. Is it? Hmm? No, I'm told. I need my phone. You need your, Yeah, it's not on the computer. So it is on the computer. your voice again. <laughs> 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 don't, don't make clone. me don't make me subconsciously what is it don't make me con what is it self-conscious yeah that's about my trying. voice man that's right. that's not nice oh here we go oh gosh boom it took me like two seconds <laughs> <laughs> i was born yesterday at i'm very very pleased to announce that the ba first baby home uh, is born so when was that from? Born yesterday at 11.55. And the music, uh, why are they playing the music? I put that in. <laughs> technically savvy. So this will not give you more details. So when was that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, when was the video? She's fine. We call her Eve. Eve? You know? Oh, I think I do remember something like See? that. But when was that? All right, now I know what to search for. You won't have the right name. But and wait. Yes, you know, it is, this really is a Mandela effect thing. The, uh, um, for Eve. 2002. 2002. Eve, CBS News. So it's real. And, uh, well, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I don't mean real, real, real. I just mean they haven't said it's not real. Well, a scientist announcement Friday that her group had produced the first cloned human being triggered skepticism from researchers, condemnation from some religious groups, and a federal investigation. The seven-pound baby was born Thursday by cesarean section and will be home in three days, said Bridget yeah, Bossier-Lier. So, okay, blah, so blah, it blah. was like a report. Because, yeah, I mean, I just That's Googled... That's the clone aid. I just Googled, have they ever cloned a human? And all these articles seem to be saying no. Which, of course, they have, I just mean... Yeah, I mean, they're denying that this ever happened, too. But I remember, she, don't you... This is not... Yeah, no, that rings a bell. Eve, yeah. Yeah, so that's so interesting. Well, so they probably... So before we continue, I will accept your apology now. <laughs> well, well time out. Nope, time out. nope, nope. Okay. First apologize, and then you can explain why you don't really need to apologize <laughs> for some strange Hold reason. On. What is it you would like me to apologize what, for with you your sunglasses on? <laughs> you know what you need to apologize for. Okay, well, here's the thing. What you said was mm -hmm. they had cloned a baby. Yeah. And what I said in response was... To this day, they claim that they have never cloned humans. Who's they? The, the, the consensus, the powers that be, the media, mm. the scientists, mm. all that stuff. They. The, the, they. 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 Shit, yeah, I gotta it is go Pride get, Month, yeah. I you, gotta it, get... Uh, the figures that would come out of your mouth. This is all going in, by the way. But, is um, that how you would like to uh, be identified as a they? As a they. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I just want to respect your, you know. My pronouns identity. is the proper. Identity. The, my, right. Well, I guess the identity represents, the, the pronouns represent the identity. I want to be very respectful of yours. You are. I appreciate Good. it. Good. Thank you. So now apologize. Well, right. So you, so you cut me off. So. No. I said that. And then you said, afterwards you said that, wait, maybe it's a fraudulent thing, which I didn't say anything to that so i don't know oh yeah but yeah. even when you but when you found it it did ring a bell mm -hmm. i do remember like yeah. so it, it, it did hit the news it was on cbs and cnn yeah and totally MSNBC. which is really interesting because they probably like put that out to put it into our consciousness and then also deny it at the same time so that it's like they told us but okay. didn't tell us what am i actually i'm not actually wrong about anything. you are i'm not let's go review the tape and see what you said okay Okay, I, mean, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said, yeah, that was exactly what I said. What did you say? I said, I said, no, I said. There's nothing. You won't be able to day, find anything. They still... You said you won't be able to find anything. Well, That's then why. we were just playing with each other. But, the, but no, what I no, no, said no. was. Wow, that... you sound, you are like a woman right now. <laughs> 
Pride Month, Pink oh, Hat, he's, they. He's insulting everybody. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting a little hot in this hat. I'm going to have to go get my other one. Yeah. Or just wing it. I'm going to wing it. Michael, appreciate the mushroom hat, but it's hot. It's we live warm. in Ecuador. We do. All right, you ready? I mean, this can't. I mean, we got to redo this. It's like, going in. This bro. is like, All I don't even it. know what we're talking about. We haven't started so you the haven't pod apologized. yet. This is the outtakes. You I have, have nothing to apologize for. You have for. to apo just apologize. If anyone's watching, if this actually makes it in, the outtakes, we may get banned off of YouTube. But if this actually for, for clones? Well, no. We we made fun of a protected group. How do we make fun of them? We didn't make fun of them. You're right. We <laughs> I don't know. we I didn't talked make fun about it. <laughs> um, I mean, I said it's Pride Month. By the I way, respect whatever identity, whatever you identify as. You're right. We probably can't get banned for facetious tones. I mean, your one judgment day, of my tone. When they right, right, exactly. Okay. I mean, one day when they can read the thoughts in your head properly, yeah, then they could ban you for your thoughts. Perhaps. I mean, that's Minority Report, right? Yeah, I was thinking that too. That's yeah. that minority pre-crime. And they did call in Orwell's 19th. They did call it the Thought Police. Yeah. I mean, remember the pre-crime? Yeah. They had the, yeah. They had those, I watched that movie a few they times. They had those, good. What were they? The the it was like tanks. The tanks, and they were floating the the psychics or the whatever yeah. they called the yeah. clairvoyants. The clairvoyants. I don't remember yeah. what they called them. In yeah, like something like movie. that. Yeah. No, that was one of the like that was a really interesting movie when it came out. Yeah. I wonder if it's good. Now. Tom, it's, it's okay. I watched it probably like. I had seen it a few times, and I watched it again maybe like five, seven years ago or something. Yeah. It wasn't as good, yeah. definitely. But okay, most movies probably aren't, right? Most movies, probably yeah, aren't. the vast majority, very few hold up. Yeah. Very few hold up. It's like music. There's not a lot of music that the good music holds up yeah. more than good movies do, actually. But there's still a lot of classics, a lot of good music. No, good, yeah, good movies, good music. Yeah. No, I mean, some of my favorite movies ever are from the 50s. And yeah, some that of those sort of, are all right. All the ones you haven't seen. I've seen many of them. Should we, do you want to play that out on camera? I, I, I mean, whatever, whatever <laughs> you want to do. Uh, I roll. I don't know if you want to run, be out, I don't know if you want us to be able to run that back. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking about today? All right, well, we haven't, this is, if this is going in, it's going in at the end. So all we right. got to start. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Hello, and welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel here. For real estate videos, click here. For content you're going to absolutely love, right here. And to find out how these crazy guys got to Ecuador, click right here.